Hi there, everyone. I am Maya Engel in our digital studio here at Up North Live News, joined by Representative John Molinar. Thanks so much, Representative, for taking some time to talk with me today. Thanks for having me, Maya. I appreciate it. Of course. So just today, the House pretty overwhelmingly passed a bill that it would eventually lead to a nationwide ban of TikTok. That, of course, is a popular video app. And that is if the China-based owner doesn't sell its stake. So why do you support that bill? Well, first of all, we have to recognize what China is doing and how their system operates. So in China, the Chinese Communist Party dominates everything. Uh, by law, businesses are subservient to military as well as the Chinese Communist Party. So when you have the ownership of a Chinese company, you're also talking about military applications and surveillance opportunities. TikTok is owned by a Chinese company that um, has access to over 170 million Americans' data. Uh, they, of course, promise that they would never give that data to the Chinese Communist Party. Unfortunately, there is a law that requires them to do that if asked. So it's something that is a national security issue. Um, TikTok is something that you know, on the market, it could be sold. It could be purchased by anyone other than uh, a foreign entity of concern. And those are China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. So we aren't saying simply um, a ban on TikTok. We're saying they need to sell TikTok to a safe uh, business and uh, make sure that we are not uh, uh, promoting our adversaries and, and weakening the American uh economy or the American national security. And if the um, China-based owner doesn't sell TikTok, then it would go into a ban? That's right. There's a six-month time frame. And ultimately, it would be up to ByteDance, which is the, the uh, Chinese company that owns yeah. TikTok. And if they choose to sell, TikTok can operate as normal in the United States. Um, if they choose not to sell, then they would no longer, as a social media app, uh, be welcomed in the United States. Uh, similarly, um, you know, we, we don't allow China to, you know, we don't want them buying land near military installations. We want to be careful protecting our national security. Uh, in the cyber world, and data drives everything, uh, this is an important national security issue. Mm -hmm. And have you heard any feedback from your constituents on this issue? Well, it's important to know that uh, basically TikTok put out a push message uh, to encourage people to lobby their representatives. And so in order to, to get on the app, uh, they said, put in your zip code and communicate with your representatives. So that was a very effective lobbying effort. Uh, by a Chinese-based company that's uh, ultimately accountable to the CCP. So, yeah, we've heard from a lot of people. Sometimes people don't really know what, you know, what the issue is or why they're contacting their member of Congress. They simply know that in order to use the TikTok app, uh, they have to do this. And so can you imagine if, if we decided to revoke the most favored nation trading status for China or other policies where we disagree and suddenly they are lobbying 170 million Americans to promote China's uh, Chinese Communist Party agenda uh, rather than America's interests. Mm -hmm. So then, of course, today this bill passed through the House. What do you think the chances that it'll pass through the Senate are? You know, I think there are a number of senators. Uh, Marco Rubio has been very interested. There is bipartisan support for this legislation. In the Senate, they have a higher threshold of, of how many senators need to be in support in order to take up the legislation. So I can't predict, you know, if, if it's going to meet that threshold or if and when it will. But uh, President Biden has said he would sign it. Um, there are Democrat and Republican co-sponsors. And and I think it could receive strong bipartisan support. Now, whether it can get to that threshold to be taken up as one of their priorities, uh, that remains to be seen. 
Right. And now kind of switching gears here, the last time we talked with you, you were meeting with a group of farmers who are uncertain about their futures in the farming industry. And they say that they can't necessarily make a living right now with the current state of the farming industry and the conditions. So are you working on anything to address their concerns? I am. I'm uh, working on legislation that would uh, keep the federal government from putting more burdensome financial mandates on our farmers. For the last 10 years, the Department of Labor has forced farmers who are using the H-2A visa program. This is for migrant laborers that we have for fruit and vegetable harvests. Um, it basically mandates wage increases to the point where our family farms can no longer afford, afford these government mandated wage increases. So in the case of Michigan, it's $18 and 50 cents. Uh, plus they have housing and, and, you know, the farms just cannot afford this. So, you know, I'm hearing from fourth and fifth generation farmers about the challenges they're facing with these rising costs. And not only does that contribute to food inflation, but it also makes their, their business unsustainable in the future. And so people are talking about maybe giving it one more year or even getting out of business. And so, you know, that's not even to mention the challenges with weather and all the other uh, challenges farmers face. But these uh, government mandated wage increases are really putting pressure on the financial security for our farmers. And this bill that I've introduced would address that. It would give a pause and uh, make sure that the government isn't mandating uh, wage increases for the next two years. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Well, Representative Molinar, thank you so much for taking some time today to talk with me. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you next time. All right. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs> of course. It. Take care.